for this section. We give an overview of faces and polyhedral cones and note the connection to localization. So here we'll see some of the reasoning for why it's better to work with cones in N sub R rather than starting in M sub R. Now let's recall, so I'll have sigma convex polyhedral cone in N sub R, and we'll usually drop the convex. Okay, to get these, what do we do? I'll start with a finite S in N sub R, and then we just take the cone generated over S. So all sums of this type. We'll say that sigma is strongly convex if it contains no lines, so no non-zero vector subspaces, and we define faces as follows. So we're going to pick some M and M sub R. And with that, I could define the hyperplane associated to M and the half space associated to M as follows. So these are going to be an N sub R. One is going to be the orthogonal complement with respect to the pairing against M. And then for H sub M plus, the half space, we just change the equals to greater than or equals. With that, we note Okay, so our convex polyhedral cone sigma will be contained in a half space associated to M if and only if M is in the dual to sigma okay, and we throw away the origin. Okay, and then we'll say that this half space is a supporting half space. Now for a picture of this, okay, we've seen this one before. Okay, so let's suppose I have my sigma in black on the right. Okay, I'm going to take some half space containing our sigma. Okay, we draw in the normal. Okay, then we note no matter how I situate that, if it contains our sigma, then the normal over an M is always going to be inside of the dual, as so. Next, okay, we note if I could find generating set M1 through MS for sigma dual, then we'll get a half space representation of sigma. So sigma will be an intersection of the half spaces that go with M1 through MS. Now, to get faces, what do we do? Okay, so I'll say the tau is a face of sigma. Okay, we'll denote this by less than or equals. Okay, to get these, what we do, we're gonna consider, okay, all M in sigma check, okay, the dual to sigma. And then we're gonna take sigma and intersect with the hyperplanes for all of these n. And that's how we'll get faces. Okay, note we allow zero in here, so that'll give sigma itself, and this is gonna give us a partial ordering on the, the set of faces. Now we're just gonna info dump a bunch of properties. Okay, so if we have sigma, okay, convex polyhedral cone and n sub r, then every face of sigma is also a polyhedral cone. If we have faces tau one, tau two, and sigma, then their intersection is also a face in sigma. Finally, we have a transitive property. Okay, if tau one is a face of tau two, tau two is a face of sigma, then tau one is also a face of sigma. Let's run our recipe for faces through the usual example. So we have sigma, sigma check. I'll pick M1 through M4 and sigma check as follows, okay, M4 is just the origin. A recipe says we just take the perp and then intersect with sigma. So for M1, I take the perp, intersect with sigma, I get tau one. For M2, we take the perp, intersect with sigma, we get tau two, pointing up. For M3, we take the perp, we intersect, and we get just the origin as a face. And then finally, M4 is just the origin, we take the perp, we get everything, we intersect, we get all of sigma back. So that's a recipe that catches all of our faces. Next, okay, recall, okay, if we have dimension of sigma equal to n, then the facets are just gonna be the faces of one dimension less, okay, dimension n minus one. Okay. Proposition for facets, okay, we have sigma polyhedral cone and n sub r as usual, okay, let's say dimension is equal to n. If we consider the half space presentation for sigma, Okay, defined using M1 through MS. Then the dual of sigma is just a cone generated over M1 through MS. If sigma is fully dimensional, so dimension is equal to N, then we have a recipe for the facets. We get the facets just by intersecting sigma with 
the hyperplanes that go with the half space presentation. Finally, if we have a proper face inside of sigma, then we could define that using the facets as follows. So here, tau is just going to be the intersection of all facets that contain tau. Now, how do we connect okay, the faces of sigma to the faces of sigma check, the dual? Okay, we need some definitions. Okay, so suppose I have tau a face inside of sigma inside of n sub r. That'll define the tau perp. Okay, as follows, what we would think, we just want all m and m sub r, they're going to be perpendicular to all u and tau at the same time. For tau star, that's just going to be tau perp, and then we intersect with the dual of sigma. Proposition, okay, we'll have the tau star as a face of the dual of sigma. We'll have a bijection between the faces of sigma and the faces of sigma check, just given by passing between tau and tau star and back. Finally, dimension of tau plus dimension of tau star is equal to the dimension of sigma. Now, with our usual example, okay, you see immediately the bijection. Okay, I'll leave it to you to check the dimension property. Okay, and that's straightforward. Somewhat more interesting, we have example two from before. So here, sigma check is lower dimensional and sigma is not strongly convex. Okay, so here we're just using the two forward octants. Leave it to you to check the okay, facts in the proposition, especially that the bijection is inclusion reversing and that the dimension formula holds. Next, we have the notion of relative interior. So the relative interior of sigma is just gonna be the interior of sigma and its vector space span. So here we're just gonna take sigma throw away all the lower dimensional faces. We give the mathematical formulation of relative interior here. And from that, we get the following fact. So this is gonna let us test for when points are in tau star or its relative interior. So if tau is a face of sigma, we have that m is in tau star if and only if tau is in sigma intersect the hyperplane determined by m. To be in the relative interior, Okay, we use the same condition, but instead of inclusion, we use equality. So we see we can use the relative interior to determine which hyperplanes cut out our faces. To make some sense of this, okay, one and two, using pictures, let's consider the first octet in three space. Here, I'm gonna let tau be, okay, it's gonna point in the direction of the positive x-axis. So that means tau star is gonna be this part of sigma check determined by the yz plane, so along the back. Now, I have different choices for m. If I choose m in the direction of the positive y axis, okay, then hm is going to be determined by the xz plane, okay, and then we intersect with sigma, and we note that tau is strictly contained in hm. Okay, so that's going to be condition one. To get condition two, okay, I want to pick my m in the relative interior of tau star. Okay, so I could pick it pointing into the plane like that. Then what's going to happen? Well, if we take, okay, hm, well, hm is going to be along a slant, and so when we intersect with sigma, we're just going to get the positive x-axis, which coincides with our tau. Okay, and so we're getting condition two. We'll also need relative interiors when we get to projective torque varieties. So there we'll need what's called the separation lemma. If we have polyhedral cones, sigma 1, sigma 2, and n sub r, okay, we assume they meet along a common phase tau. Then we can represent tau as the intersection of either cone with a hyperplane associated to m. m is in the relative interior of the intersection of these two cones and m sub r. Now, let's make sense of this with a picture. So I'll pick a sigma one and a sigma two in the plane. It will meet along a common face tau given by this ray. Let's take a look at all the parts. If I take the dual sigma one, okay, we get this region in red. I negate sigma two and take the dual, we get this region in blue. If I intersect, we get this ray pointing northwest. 
its relative interior okay, is just the ray minus the origin. So if I take any m in that set, then h sub m is just going to be this line here. We move it over to m sub r. I intersect that line with either sigma 1 or sigma 2. We get back precisely tau, as promised. So that's the separation line. Now, final topic is localization. So here we want to see the first beginnings of convex geometry saying something about coordinate rings and affine torque varieties. To start, we have Gordon's lemma, which just promises that what comes out is the coordinate ring of an affine torque variety. So I'll have sigma, a rational polyhedral cone, and n sub r. Okay, well remember, rational just says our cone can be generated by elements in the lattice n. We'll define S sub sigma to be the dual of sigma intersect m. Okay, so that's going to be a sublattice of m. The result is that's finitely generated. So that means S sub sigma is an affine semigroup, so it'll correspond to a coordinate ring of some affine torque variety. Now, the localization, okay, we know it. We'll have our sigma, rational polyhedral cone and n sub r. We'll choose a face tau inside of sigma. And we know from before, we're able to represent tau as, okay, sigma intersect with some hyperplane defined by some m, okay, where m is in sigma check. And now, because we have rational, we can assume it's also inside of the lattice n. Proposition, okay, if I take Okay, the C algebra over S sub tau, where, okay, S sub tau is now just tau check intersect M. That will be the localization of the C algebra over S sub sigma at the character chi sub M. Okay, and then this is how we write it with our old notation. Let's clarify the connection to algebraic geometry. So we have a torus T sub N. Character lattice M, lattice of one parameter subgroups N. We pick sigma, a rational polyhedral cone in N sub R. Sigma check is going to be the cone generated over some M1 through MS, where the M's are characters on T sub N. With that, we have a formal construction to get an affine torque variety. Okay, we're going to take spec of the C algebra over the affine semigroup. Now, if tau is a face in sigma, Okay, when we take duality, the okay, sigma check sits inside of tau check. So the C algebra for S sub sigma sits inside of the C algebra for S sub tau. If we think of these as coordinate rings, okay, the spaces will reverse inclusions. So I take spec, we'll have U sub tau sitting inside of our variety V, where U sub tau is going to be an open set in V. Okay, so let's see how that works. So U sub tau is going to be spec of, okay, we have the C algebra over S of tau. Okay, this is just the localization by our proposition on the previous board. And we know what localization does. Well, we're just going to take the original coordinate ring and then we throw away the closed subset defined by the element we're localizing by. So that gives me an open subset in V. So that's how we get to geometry. So faces are going to correspond to open subsets of your affine toric variety. Again, to clarify with an example, okay, let's take our sigma like so, which we've been using okay, in this video all along. Tau, I'll take to be this ray pointing northeast. Now, if we take the duals, okay, we have our usual dual of sigma. The dual of tau, okay, recall the dual is okay, all points within 90 degrees of that ray. So we're just going to get a half plane. So we see that sigma check sits inside of tau check. Now we intersect with our lattice, which will just be Z2 in this case. Sigma check intersects our lattice. Okay, of characters. Okay, that'll be generated by 0, 1 and 1 minus 1 over the natural numbers. Tau check intersect M over the natural numbers is generated by 0, 1, 1 minus 1 and minus 1, 1. We translate into coordinate rings. So C algebra over S sub sigma is just C over T2. T1, T2 inverse. So we can think of this as just being C over 2 indeterminates. For 
the C algebra over S sub tau, okay, we're just going to take this one and we're going to add in the element T2, T1 inverse. Now that's the same as localizing at T1, T2 inverse. So what I'm looking at here is just the localization on Y over okay, the polynomials and variables X and Y. Okay, so we're just going to localize by that. But that's just going to give me C, X, Y, Y inverse. And we know that's the coordinate ring for a C cross a C star. Okay? And so our inclusion is just C cross C star sitting inside of C2.